Right, we'll try that again. Um, I am here. Hello, it's Sunday. Um, right, I have my coffee. Hope you've got one too, maybe a bit of cake. Um, I thought it's probably not a good idea to have cake while I'm trying to make a card. I'll get greasy fingerprints over everything. No, that's not good. Um, I've been wanting to make a double dutch card for ages. And this morning when I woke up and couldn't work out what I was going to do today, I thought I'll have a go at a double dutch card. So I had a play this morning because I've never done one before and the last thing you want is me fumbling around trying to work out um, my measurements. So um, I thought I'll have a go at one and I've made one and I made this little fella. Get him into camera shot and try not to get it too bright. There we go. So he's got a lovely little sentiment inside um, and I did it in nice lemony yellow so it could be for a girl or a boy. Um, and that was using Sarah's signature Little Angel collection, that one. I love that giraffe, he's gorgeous. And a bit of um, water reactive ink on there to make it look pretty. All right, so I thought I'd have a go at another one and use the Vintage Lace collection because that's one of my favourites. All right, so I've done a few little bits to prep for it. Um, I'm hoping everybody who went away when I stopped can now come back and say hi again. Um, I'm not entirely sure I'm getting my comments coming through, but I'll carry on like there's people here anyway, because, well, I've got nothing else to do, have I? So um, I'll just put you on the overhead and make a start on the card and um, hope that there's somebody out there watching me. All right, cheers. Right, okay, so like I said, I made a start on the card as it is. Now, the one I made was a six by four, and I decided I wanted it a little bit wider on this one. It's the same height, um, so what you start with is a piece of cardstock, which is 10 inches by five inches, all right? And I scored it at six inches, so that when you fold that over, you get a two inch little bit at the bottom, okay? Um, you can have a play online, there's loads of um, tutorials for double dutch cards. This strip um, that goes across the bottom is two inches wide and obviously it's like gatefold goes across the bottom. All right, um, for some reason I'm not picking up my comments so I'm really sorry people today. I can see that there are people there. Hi Joan um, and Susan and my sister Becca. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this little bit... Uh, the strip across the bottom I'm going to attach it across the bottom all right and um, as I've run out of collal uh, tacky glue sorry collal or purpose glue I'm going to use tacky glue um, having to use tacky glue for everything now where I would want to normally use um, all purpose but hey ho needs must and all that and it's out of stock at the moment for anybody who's telling me to go and Go and buy some. Um, I can't. It's not there. Um, otherwise I would. Because I love it. It's my fave. Alright. So now we've got a nice little gatefold bit across the bottom. Alright. And it's pretty much just decorating up that we're going to be doing today. Um, but it's just such a an unusual card fold. And I haven't done it before today. So uh, I thought it would be quite nice. Um, and I'm going to try and stick just to the vintage lace collection i like sticking to one collection because um you know everything's going to match so you're not look worried about you know the color being just right or you know the 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 um tones being exactly right for for your card because if you get that wrong they can look pretty awful so um you want to try and make it right so if you've got the complete collection always a good place to start and then you can start playing later um, I can see loads of people commenting and I can't see your comments today. That's awful. I'm so sorry. I will go back and comment and, and say hi to everybody afterwards. I can see that Jan's there as well now and um, Joan. So uh, sorry, guys, I can't read your comments at the moment, which is a pain in the neck. I shall be in touch with Switcher and find out what the heck they're playing at with that. OK, anyway, uh, so my matting and layering... Obviously, I'm going to stick to the colour tones in the collection. So I've got the Luxury Linen card and the Luxury Pearl card, both 
absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to stick with the linen for the minute because I don't want it glaring too much or anything at you. And I need to decide what papers I want to use. So I've got my six by six paper pad. Um, deciding which paper to use on this is really difficult because um, they're all stunning, quite frankly. Um, they really excelled themselves at Crafters Companion with this collection. Um, Sarah did an incredible job. It's beautiful. I really like this one and I think I might use that for the top, the top half, and then maybe use something in a, um, a purple down the bottom. So uh, let's start working with that because there was another um, piece of paper that I saw in here which is absolutely beautiful. That one. I think we'll use that one down the bottom. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> like I said, they're all so stunning that deciding is probably one of the most difficult things to do. So, right, we've got a couple of papers. So we know what papers we want to use and we now want to decide what card colours we're going to use. Which shouldn't be too difficult because, like I said, it's all coordinating. So uh, let's have a look. I'm thinking... That works out quite nicely because I've got oh, already got a piece cut. So if I use maybe the blue on the top, or the, no, the lavender on the top, I think. Um, so let's find that in here. There we go. So if I use the lavender on the top, that's quite nice. And maybe the blue down the bottom. Um, and I can use some of this piece here. All right, so let's pop that out of the way minute i throw stuff on the floor and then have to do loads of tidying up later but hey ho right so we're going to do lavender on the top blue on the bottom so we need to cut this to size um i don't tend to measure an awful lot i just tend to snip it where i want to trim it and then trim it um because i tend to find i'm useless with the measurements um if I'm being honest. Right. I would ask you to comment and say what you've been up to this week, but I have no way of actually reading your comments at the moment, which is a pain. But I know you're there, which is nice. I only do this because uh, it gets gives me an opportunity to see the world. Oh, hi, Debbie. Um, Debbie Clough is there as well. Um, I can see that people are commenting, but like I said, I can't actually see the comments. So I will go back and say hi to everybody after the po after um, I've finished this. All right, so that's the right size piece of the top. Don't leave the blade up on your own cutting machine. You will end up hurting yourself. Um, I do speak from experience, trust me, on this one. All right, so that's the right size for my mat. And then I want my beautiful layer on top and I don't know which bit of this paper I want to use so I think the bit with the little lacy there because that's quite nice and I have got an idea about putting a lace panel across the top in a minute so uh, all will become clear don't worry all right so I'm just gonna mark this paper where I want to cut it all right and then I'll cut this. Anybody else hate cutting into these papers because it means the bit that you've cut out you're not using and I always feel so wasteful. But hey, yeah. And that was the wrong one anyway, but never mind. Because I was going to do this one on the top. And I think, yeah I know you're getting to see me make all my mistakes today aren't you? Sorry. I have found that over the course of the lockdown, my brain has become very befuddled. Um, I talk rubbish. I talk rubbish at the best of times anyway, but you know. Um, and I just can't remember things. Um, I've always been lousy with names, um, but it's got really bad. Just trying to remember the names of actors in films or even what film I watched last few nights ago um but it would seem it's not just me my hubby's like it as well whether it's something in our house that's doing this to us so that's that's the layer that i'm putting on the top half all right and then i was going to use 
something like this on the bottom or this bit whatever we'll get there in a minute all right so that's my top half now i need to trim a piece of um cardstock for the bottom half whoa okay that might work <laughs> um it's not often that works for me right okay so i need to mat and layer this up i do like matting and layering because it's um it does give you nice borders on things um, and frame stuff beautifully. Um, Leanne's always saying to mat and layer stuff and she's absolutely right. And you can tell her I said that, she'll probably see it. Um, she'll be doing some colouring. If, if I remember rightly, she said last week she was going to be doing some colouring this week. Um, I love watching Leanne colouring, it's so relaxing. I'm like watching me, which must be quite stressful for people. All right, so we're just trimming our mats and layers. That's the left side. This is the right side. Unless I get it wrong in a minute, in which case they'll swap round. Honestly, I am incredibly directionally unstable. And knowing my left from my right is really, well, I don't, so. <laughs> I am throwing that stuff in a bin, don't worry, um, and not just onto the floor. Right, okay, so now I need to trim this to the right width so that I can do my layers. Oh, I am annoyed, I can't see your comments. It's the two-way interaction, I like being able to chat to people, but um, like I said, have to come back later and, and see what you all said probably out there laughing at me but never mind oh, i can actually see a little thumbs up that's quite cool look thumbs up um but i can't see comments strange never mind um no no comments well no comments showing up i know you're commenting because i can see it flash up at the top of the screen um but that's not the same all right so we're just creating our nice little background pieces just the base for our decoration which I'll get to in a minute and I was going to do some uh, flower forming foam see I managed to say it I have not started on the gin so that's good don't like gin anyway actually um, slow gin's not too bad but gin itself is too bitter for me um, always like my sweet stuff so uh, I tend to go for um, liqueurs Tia Maria being a great favourite um, hi Kerry um, I can see you made a comment so I can say hi um, but I can't see what the comment is so I'll uh, like I said come back to that later right so let's do a bit of gluing and sticking and getting our little pretties on the page or on the card and then we'll do some decorating up. Hopefully this might give you a bit of a boost and inspiration for you to go off and make your own card. Um, I don't know whether anybody else has made double dutch cards before. Like I said, this is my first foray into them, so uh, it's quite cool. And having discovered that they are really nice and easy to make. All right, it's not sticking down. If I get a corner of card that isn't sticking down, I'll grab my little blue bottle and um, stick it on with that because uh, that's really good. And it doesn't put too much glue down because otherwise if you put too much glue down, it oozes out. Um, hi Alison, good to see you too. Um, again, can't comment back or say anything other than hi um, because I can't see the comments at the moment, which is a pain. Um, Hey ho, there are people there, that's the main thing. I'm not alone in the world. <laughs> Feels like it at the moment, stuck in the house. The rest of the world could have just completely disappeared and it's all recordings, but it isn't. But that would make an interesting storyline for a film or something, wouldn't it? You think you're 
in isolation so that you can go out into the world again and then when you go out into the world again there's nobody there anyway so oh excuse me that was a swig of coffee when i am um, when i'm sat talking i do waffle on way too much but um i don't want you to be sat in you know in silence there shouldn't you know there's no point in me doing a facebook live if all i do is is um you see in silence me make a card I could put the radio on in the background. I spend quite a lot of time listening to the radio at the moment. Um, I've really got back into Radio 4. Um, they have some really good comedies on in the evening and um, some incredibly good dramas in the afternoon. And then there's the Archers. Got back into the Archers again. Um, I'm contemplating at the moment because um, I'm a couch potato at the best of times. And I tried Joe Wicks. Um, and Joe Wicks was a bit way too energetic for me. Um, and I saw on Facebook, there's this um, figure eight, which is a, a, a series of DVDs um, and it's dance moves. Um, yeah, I'm not much of a dancer. Um, I'm not built for dance, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, and I thought I might, might get myself that and try and see if that can get my body moving a bit. I'll probably do two sessions and then find out it's not for me um, and I've wasted a bit of money but it's only 37 quid so you know not massive massive amounts of money but it'll be didn't put that on quite straight but never mind don't know whether you can see it's not straight but no it doesn't show up too much there that's right cool <laughs> right so we've got the base of our card done all right, so that's just the uh, little flaps all ready to go. Right, you can see in the background here, I've got a whole load of um, flower forming foam, which I have cut out and I actually did make one flower. Um, so I'm going to make a whole load more in a minute. But I want to do the, um, the panel that I'm going to put on the top. And um, I thought I might put a bit of lace work on there as well, because... This is one of my favourite dies in the collection um, and it fits this just beautifully actually. So I'm going to have a look and see, I think there's a cream, um, cream card in the linen. Yes there is, there we go, that one. And I thought I might cut that out of the cream and put that as a panel across before I do the topper. All right, so if I... Just trim this cardstock so that it's the right width to go through the machine and not waste loads. I hate wasting card. All right, so trim that. And I'm gonna put both through. But as I've probably said before, if I'm gonna put both through, I will tape them down because um, the last thing you want is to ruin dies going through your machine. I have done that before now um, and it is absolutely tragic and you don't want to do it. So uh, I've learned my lesson and I tape things down. Um, the other lesson I have learned is this is a really intricate die so it needs, needs some assistance. Right. Now, before I do this, I'm going to show you my plates again, and I show you them every week because I'm hoping that different people watch. This one here is my base one, all right? As you can see, it is incredibly well worn, all right? It still works. Don't worry about it, all right? My plastic shim looks worse than a banana but it still works because what I tend to do with my plates is I use them in a different order. All right, so I use one plate as my base plate for cutting um, and that one I try and flip and rotate and all the rest of it to try and keep it flat and it, it's fairly flat. It's got a little bit of a bend in it, but it's not too bad. All right, and then the other plate, which is also a cutting plate, but I don't use it as a cutting plate. I just use it as my top plate. And the reason I keep this as my top plate is when my bottom plate is finally worn, this one will become my bottom plate. And then I put a new one as my top plate. 
The reason for keeping this one as a top plate is because when I want to do some embossing um, from a die that I've just cut, I'll use this as the main mat with the um, die and card and then the um, rubber embossing plate on top of it so that it pushes it into this one. And because this one hasn't got lots of cuts in it, you're not going to get your plate, you're not going to get plate marks on your card which is really important, especially when you're using um, Miri cardstock. All right, so I always keep this one as my top plate. You can see I made a mistake a few times and I've cut bottles out of it, but never mind. Um, for the most part, it's got no marks on it. All right, which does keep your um, embossing much nicer. All right, so my plate, I always put my two plates together with my die sandwich between them, but then I put my magnetic on top so my magnetic isn't anywhere near my dies at the moment because it doesn't need to be for this and then I put my plastic one on top my plastic shim you know the one that's really banana like the reason I do this is because if this banana like one was in the middle of the sandwich it makes it really difficult to actually put it through the machine but with this one on top and because the two ends are bent down I always put it so that those are closest because if I were to put it the other way up you could see that that would it wouldn't go into the machine particularly well but that way round it does go into the machine all right um, it just means I then don't have to change my plates quite so often all right now this Probably won't have cut through. Oh, looks like it might well have done. Right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to try and emboss it. So as you can see, I'm changing and putting my top plate as my bottom plate now. All right, put my rubber embossing mat on. Okay, bottom plate becomes my top plate and then my clear, um, my plastic shim, sorry. So let's have a look and see how that's perfect. All right. By doing the embossing, it tends to push the cards more into the um, embossing folder and any bits that may not have cut just right tend to, tend to just cut up that little bit more then. All right, so I'm going to put my plates back in the right order, ready to cut anything else I need in a minute my metal shim out the way all right so now I can make a mess on my desk it's like it's snowing in it they reckon we're going to get another cold snap towards the end of next week but well it'll just be less warm rain down here won't it that's what we usually get in the south it's a pretty murky day today in Plymouth but um here home we're all right, we're inside, doesn't matter. And I'm making a nice sunny card. That's not the one I wanted. Where's the one I wanted? Because that one's falling apart. I know the feeling. Right, there we go. Making a mess all over my desk. Don't worry, I'll clear it in a minute. And I'm hoping that this is exactly the right length to go on that card front. Okay. I really am. So untidy. Here we go. Right. Into the bin. All right. So this, if I was absolutely right, it does fit across the front. There you go. So that sits beautifully across our card front and creates a nice little bit of interest there so i'm just going to stick that down and i'm going to use my dotty tape runner um absolutely awesome invention thanks leanne um because it does does exactly what it needs to which is stick down only in where you've got card 
All right. And then that across the middle. Okay. Voila. Right. So that's the basis of our card done. Now I need my um, topper and sentiment, which are going to be one and the same actually on this. So um, what I've got is, sorry, I'm out of shop for a minute. Why can you never get stuff out of your embargo? Your, um, magnetic folders. My nails aren't very good at the moment, so I was having trouble getting stuff out of my folder. Try and slide it to the edge and pull it off. There we go. Right, so what I want to do is use this frame, all right, and then this bit inside I'll do as um, with the sentiment stamped onto it. And I'm going to use one of the sentiments from the Vintage Lace Collection. Like I said, I'm trying to stick just to the one collection for this so that it all coordinates, all looks really nice and lovely. All right, so I need to decide what colour I'm going to do this in. And I'm thinking of going back to that lovely lilac-y colour because um, it's really nice. Right. So if I do lilac for the background and I'll do a cream for the front for the sentiment, that looks like it's quite a plan, doesn't it? Oops, let's, let's not use that bit again. Right, I'm such a tight one. I use one with the um, low tack tape, and I've got I've got loads of the low tack tape. Mind you, I thought I had loads of the um, the uh, all purpose glue, and I didn't. Still, right now, whilst this is intricate, it's not quite as intricate a die as that um, lace panel. So uh, I'm going to give this a go going through with just the plates. Because my plates are old, it does make it more difficult for them to cut, so uh, it's my own fault if it doesn't cut first time. And I'm making such a mess on my desk. But the last thing you want to do is just see me cleaning up, so uh, you'll just have to see me make a mess instead. Alright, and that has cut beautifully first time. How awesome is that? just to swizzle out these little bits. This is one of those tools that I really wouldn't be without now. I love it. Because it means I don't have to poke them all out individually. It does the hard work for me. And I think that's what I really love about Crafter's Companion. They come up with stuff that does the hard work for you so you get to do the fun bits of crafting. Okay, so this is going to be our front panel, right? And then we're just going to have a sentiment panel that sits on the front and then we're just going to decorate up with some flowers and sprigs and things. And uh, I'll do some flower forming foam before your very eyes. All right, so um, I'm thinking of using this cream again over the top for the sentiment. Um, that piece isn't big enough, but we will get another piece. Oh, I know what I did with it. It's over here. There we go. I was just trying to work out where I put all my um, pieces. So, here we go. We get a pair of scissors. To cut out a little piece to go through the machine. So, how's everybody's week been? I know you can't, I can't see your comments, but like I said, I can come back and look at them later. So let me know how you're all doing. You're not going too stir crazy in all of this madness, are you? Um, I know they're supposed to be telling us this week about how they plan to start to ease the lockdown. Do we want them to ease the lockdown or are we happy to stay inside for the time being? I know I'm quite happy to stay inside for the time being, but I am very conscious of the fact that at some point they're going to have to do something because we, you know, the economy can't keep 
can't sustain this for very long, can it? And there's loads of companies that will go bust if they don't actually start to look at different ways of working. So uh, as much as we might like to hide away from the world, I think we're going to have to do something that will put us back into it eventually. Right, so we've got a nice panel there. Now, um, this is a stamp I haven't used before. And um, I know lots of people say, my stamp doesn't stamp very well. It's, it, you know, um, it's blotchy and things like that. One of the things I found with acrylic stamps in particular, and this is an acrylic as opposed to a photopolymer, um, is if you sand them, and I know it looks really, really violent. It's not particularly rough sandpaper. Um, and it won't damage them, I promise you, is if you just rub over the top, it just gives the surface a little bit of a key. You're not taking a lot of the stamp off and you only do this once, all right? And it just makes the stamp work a little bit better, or at least I found that, all right? And I know lots of people do this um, and swear by it, and I swear by it as well, because it, for me, it works, all right? If it doesn't work for you, don't do it. Simple as. Right, I'm always, always, without fail, will test my stamps before I um, before I use them. You can see I, this is a pe just a piece of paper that I keep on my desk for when I'm doing um, embossing powder or when I want to test my stamps. So, uh, all right, now I'm thinking I will use the quick dry ink on this. And I think I might like to go for a purple. So let's put me a box of quick dry inks. Lots and lots of quick dry inks. And I want a purple. So I'm thinking of crushed velvet. We'll see what crushed velvet looks like on that cream. All right. So I've got this little blue. It's a piece of foam. Um, it's not as good as the Crafter's Companion foam thing, but um, I don't have one of them. I forgot to order it. I placed an order last week. It hasn't arrived yet. Um, but then with everything that's going on, these things are taking more time. But I do have some funky foam, so I just used a bit of funky foam instead. And that's stamped beautifully. I just want to see what it looks like on the cream, which is why I kept this little bit here. All right. And I will just to stamp it on the back. And see the only the reason I'm doing it is because sometimes when you stamp onto a coloured cardstock, you don't realise it. It changes the colour of your ink slightly, and you can end up with a blue-looking yellow or whatever. But that looks lovely, so uh, we'll use that. Cool. Right, so we're just going to stamp that up onto our. It's great, I've stamped it two times perfectly. Wait, what's the bet in this time it'll go wrong? <laughs> That's what usually happens to me and then I end up having to cut it out again and do it again. You notice I'm holding the stamp down. The reason for doing that is I want to give the ink a real, really good chance to transfer rather than just stamp down, lift off and then you go, oh, that didn't work. Um, so I always hold it there for a little bit longer than you would think you would need to. And that's stamped that beautifully, hasn't it? Cool. Right. Now let's give that a clean off. I'm sorry, I've said it before. Um, I like to keep my stamps clean. Um, they're going to get discoloured and everything anyway, but the last thing I want is one colour of ink transferring onto the next card that I make. Because um, that is really disappointing. As well as having it not stamped properly and all the other issues that you could have. So we can now pop this into the middle of here. All right, but I'm thinking I might raise this up on foam pads and then raise this up on foam pads as well. So, well, I say foam pads, where's me on foam roll? Ah, there it is. Excuse me. Right. This is the um, foam shaker tape that, that Crafters Companion do, um, and it's really good stuff, actually. So I'm just going to take it down just beyond halfway, because this is actually going to stick 
over the bottom. Actually, let's do a little bit of line across there. Okay. Little bits of foam tape. I hope you can see me all right. My camera keeps moving. I did try and put it in the right place earlier. Let me see if I can... Whoop. Hey, you can see my tummy. No, that's not good. Um, let's let it slide back down. There we go. Um, <laughs> right. Okay, so that can go in the middle there. God, I've been waffling for 35 minutes now. Good grief. That's bad, isn't it? Just have to sit in the darkened room quietly after this. Not speak to anybody for a while. Actually, what I'll do is I'll go out to the kitchen, put my tea on and watch Leanne whilst um, like that one. Yeah, there we go. That's better. I thought I'd stuck it down to the bottom half. That would have not been good. Um, so that's one thing to watch out for. Don't put your um, foam down too far. All right. You can just about see it at the bottom there, but it is tucked inside. So... Uh, and this, I'm actually not going to raise it up on foam pads. I'm going to use, I'm going to use my um, Colal 3D glue gel because I don't want it raised up too much. And 3D glue gel, you can squidge down so that you can get the height just the way you want it, which is fab. You're not restricted by the height of a foam pad. It's just how much you push it down. You also have to be slightly careful that you don't push it down too far and end up with it not stuck up at all. There we go. All right, so actually that's a really nice card without anything else on it. Um, but now we're gonna make some foam flowers to add to it and, and make it really, really pretty. Well, it's really pretty now, but hey ho. Right, so I have already cut out um, a whole load of flowers and I use the flower forming foam that's from the same collection all right that um, so from the vintage lace collection and I've got a whole load of my little um, stamens onto wire already um, Sarah has got a lovely um, Facebook live that she did on the flower forming foam so I don't need to show you how to do it but I'm going to show you as well anyway because um, sometimes I think it's nice you know you look at when Sarah does it and well you go well you've designed it so of course it's going to look brilliant when you do it um, but if you can see somebody else do it for real sat in their craft room on a Sunday afternoon bored um, <laughs> it gives you the opportunity to see it as well and go actually no it does turn out the way she says it does right so I'm just going to plug my iron in because I didn't want to leave that plugged in while I was doing the other stuff because otherwise I'd have ended up burning myself I do that enough on the oven as it is when I'm cooking a roast right now that iron really doesn't take long to wait to warm up this is a little swan travel iron um it does have a steam thing in it but i just don't put any water in it and and you can see i just use it for my flower forming foam because it's got a, a bit of something on it from from the foam all right so i'm just going to make up and i'm just going to use bubbles and cups and if you've watched um sorry you'll know what bubbles and cups are so I'm just going to do a few of them. All right. So let's see. Is that warmed up? Yep. Okay. And then I'm just going to try and... Now these little ones might fall apart when I try and pierce the middle of them with the stamens. I'm not too worried because once I've got my um, hot glue on there, they should be fine. Because you just glue them back together. Oops. Alright, so 
static on these is incredible. Ouch. See, I told you I'd burn myself, didn't I? All right, so these little bubbly ones. Because instead of allowing them to form into little cups, I'm, I'm flipping them round. Because their natural tendency, as you could see there, was, was for them to form bubbles. Little cups, sorry. Um, and if you want them to bubble, you need to turn them around so that they... Ah! <laughs> they keep sticking to your fingers! Um, right. Now, I'm going to do them quite quite a few layers. Because I want, I don't want too many flowers, um, but I want them to be nice and full. I just did loads of um, these. I think I'll probably only use three, but okay, three flowers that is not um, three layers. Honestly, I shouldn't be allowed near hot stuff because I really do end up hurting myself quite a lot. I'm good at that. Right, one more. And this time I'm going to do it as cups. OK, so I'm actually just going to let it fall off and form into its little cup like that, which is its natural state. One, two. Oh, I've got a little one there. There we go. So three big. Well, they're actually the two smallest sizes of this particular flower. Um, oh, that one didn't cup up so, so much. It's an open cup. Get more tea in that. Right, okay. Now, um, I am going to switch my iron off before I hurt myself, okay? And move that out of the way. I haven't got myself organised enough like some people have and ended up, you know, making a whole like box full of flowers. Um, I just tend to make them when I want them because I find it easier. That way I know what I what I want, really. So I'm going to use the, uh, these are beautiful purple ones. They're stunning, aren't they? Such a vibrant colour. I really love it. Right. I haven't got a pokey tool that you can pull them off the end of. So I've just got an ordinary pokey tool. All right. Um, so I'm just going to stab through the middle of the littlest ones. Okay. And then try and stab through the middle of the bigger ones. And like I said, these ones probably will fall apart when I put the stamen through because the wire is uh, quite wide. Right, I'm just going to leave that there for a moment while I try and make sure my wire is nicely twisted tight. Okay. Now. So we pull this off the centre. Try and keep all of the holes together. Do everything we can to not have it come apart. There we go. There's quite a lot of stamens there, so they'll probably... Just a little bit tight going through. Come on, you can do this. Wiggle it through. There we go. Right. Pull that down. There. That's my little bubble one. Right, now I'll do my cup and I'm going to do the lighter purple. There we go. It's getting better at focusing, isn't it? There we are. Right. So we start with our little ones. Okay. I wonder whether I can zoom in a bit for you. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Is that better? There we go. Right. Okay. So poke through the middle of the little ones. Right, tidy them up so that they all cup together. There we are. 
right and now we're going to go through the middle of the larger size like I said these are the two smallest sizes I didn't want anything too big I wanted the, the whole card to look quite delicate and elegant no idea who I'm going to give this card to don't know anybody delicate and elegant um, elegant people but not delicate I don't know anybody delicate right there we go almost looks like a peony it's beautiful might be the peony die don't know um, I took the, the name cards off so I have no idea which one it is all right so we just find our little hole in the middle try and poke our stamens through and not pull the whole lot apart there that looks quite pretty doesn't it right now what i'm going to do i'm going to heat up my glue gun or glue pen so that i can glue the bottoms of these and then snip the ends off all right and that also helps just in case any of your little petals are, are a little bit loose how did I know that was going to happen? I did actually get out another glue stick because I had a feeling I was going to run out of glue. That's typical, isn't it? Just when you're in the middle of doing something. Is that just me that happens to or does it happen to everybody? Come on, glue gun, you can do this. pencil that will fit down there. Yes I have. Oops. Right I've now just squares, squirted glue all over my flower. Don't worry I'll sort that out in a minute. Might end up having to make another one. But Moral of that story, don't squeeze your glue over your flowers. Whoops. This is where I burn myself even more. You see, I've got glue all over my flower. Hey ho. And now I've just pulled the flower petal, a couple of petals off. It's all right. Flowers aren't perfect. And that one's missing a couple of petals. <laughs> it's a few petals short of a flower. And like a few sandwiches short of a picnic. Right, there we go. Saved. Just come on, let's heat that up and get that sorted. Right. All right, switch my clue pen off so I don't hurt myself anymore. I think that's enough pain for one day. Right, let's zoom back out a bit. Can I glue? There we go. We're getting there. And a little bit more. There we are. Right. That camera is still messing about. I'm going to have to have another play with that before next week's. Because it's, uh, it's almost like it's falling. Right. So what we do snip the ends off so you can reuse those little bits of wire you don't need too many bits of wire all right and then on the third one here so I've got some stamen spare and lots of petals so I can do that later okay let's bring back in our card and I'm thinking if I pop these little flowers up around the top edge with a few sprigs and I thought I might do the sprigs in cream um, and we got some really nice sprigs in this set I think I like that one I'll, sh I'll cut it out and show you 
And this one here where I stamped earlier, I actually stamped it on the reverse. So I, cause I kind of like thought I want to be able to use this. So uh, I'll use the front side and then I'm not wasting anything. All right. So we'll just uh, cut a couple of these out and then we're nearly done with our card. And I've been waffling for 15 minutes now. I think I'll have another swig of coffee. Oh, it's gone cold. No surprise there. I spend most of my life drinking cold coffee. Everybody in work will tell you I drink cold coffee because I am weird like that. Here we go. Nearly done. There. So that's one sprig. And keep away from my iron, which is still quite hot. And there's my second sprig. Okay. Looking for my pokey tool when it's sat right next to me. Honestly, I told you, my brain has gone completely. All right, so what we're gonna do is get me a glue gel. I'm just gonna pop my sprigs down first of all, all right? Just where I want them. Okay, arrange quite nicely and then just pop my flowers over the top using some 3D glue gel. Lots of. All right. It's very difficult to use lots of it because it's about to run out, but I'll do my best. Okay. Is that one going to stick down? Have I got enough glue gel on it? I think I have. There we go. Because I'll have to refill that in a minute. All right, and there we have it. Another card, another Sunday. Let me just put you on the overhead there. Oh, there we go. All right, so that's my card for the day. Get it in camera shot. Now, what I probably will do later is decorate up at the inside and just put some pretty pattern paper in there as well. You know, matted, matted and layered. All right, so, um, like I said, sorry I can't chat to everybody um it's a bit of a shame that that um, the comments haven't shown up today but i shall enjoy going back and having a read of your comments in a minute when i'll go and make myself a fresh cup of coffee all right um hope you're having a lovely sunday hope you're surviving the lockdown really well hope you've enjoyed this card and i will probably be back and see you again next sunday all right have a good week all cheers bye <laughs>